The Boyd family is an institution in Munin. There is something in the, the Boyd DNA. Their artistic uh, talent is, is pretty remarkable, starting with David, of course. His ability to really bring out the humanity in his subjects, even the ones he was skewering, he brought out the humanity in them. What he did with his cartoons was really something for its time in terms of syndicating them to more than 200 papers across the Southeast. He was one of the funniest people I've ever known, but he was that combination of a deep thinker and funny. You know, you, usually when you think of somebody as a deep thinker, sense of humor doesn't come into it. But good God, Boyd was one of the funniest people. He, he could recap his day and you would just be laughing. He was given concepts, which were jokes. You know, he would ponder these jokes and start, you know, putting things in place. He would create a, a you know, a, a visual for the gag. As Jeff would tell the story, he, he ends up closing the door, going into his office, opening the envelope. So if his wife heard the roar behind his closed door, it was a win. It's like opening a Christmas present. I would go in my office by myself and open them, and I would just sit there and giggle, you know, just, and my wife would go, you're looking at Boyd's drawings. He knew what it was. <laughs> If you've ever been too drunk to fish, you might be a redneck. If every day somebody comes to your door mistakenly thinking you're having a yard sale, you might be a redneck. David Boyd Jr. is, is a plein air uh, master. And, and Bonnie Boyd Bedingfield, what she does with her kicks, Remarkable. Pumpkin to talk about once you talk about your cake. Fester took a trip to the Aztec ruins. I would not be a cake artist if it was not for my family. Uh, my dad is an artist, my mom is an artist to some degree, which people don't really realize. But she was a dancer for years and that's a creative outlet for her. So the two of them together, are opposites in a certain way, but they created uh, some very unique individual children. My bedroom, for example, they left the walls blank uh, for me to draw on. My parents were never pushy, but they were always encouraging and always supportive and always curious and interested in what we had to do. I was never deterred from being immersed in art. They wanted to encourage us you know, to do whatever it was that we really wanted to do. They nurtured our abilities and they never deterred us from following that path. He was so proud of their artistic thing. And he was always showing me young David's art. And he was like, look at this Foxworthy, look at the lines on this. Because they were different kinds of artists. Foxworthy, look at this. Look at, that's, that's a dog. That's not a piece of cake, that's a dog. Right? You wanna <laughs> lean down, you wanna pet that dog on the head, you know? When he was a teacher at Heritage and he wanted to really pursue fine art, you know, little David walked himself in a cabin and just do what he, he called daily paintings. And every day just drooling, just painting, 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 painting. And he came out almost like out of a cocoon, a, a different artist, a brilliant artist. I mean, he was really good before, but he came out something different came out something very special. When I get into the art, it really, everything else just kind of slips away. But I've got this desire to make things all the time. Taking, you know, something that you see and translating it to, to a canvas is, um, yeah, it's just weird. <laughs> what Bonnie does can't be taught. From drawing, I went to painting. And in college, I majored in studio art. Painting was my specific. As a matter of fact, I hated three-dimensional art. I. I shied away from it, did everything I could not to take three-dimensional art, but really it was my, my first pregnancy because, I mean, all the oil paint and the turpentine and all the things you shouldn't be smelling and touching. And so I made a cake and I thought, okay, it's beautiful and I get to eat it. <laughs> it really is a full sensory thing. And then Rosalind Moore has so much raw talent that um, it just it blows my mind. 
And whenever she has something for sale, I try to buy it immediately. I think that children's art is one of my favorite things in the entire world. I just, I feel a connection to every single piece that I see. And I really, truly believe that every single person has some kind of artistic ability, whether they know it or not, even if it's just through their penmanship. Art has been a, a big part of saving my life in a way, because it does give me some kind of outlet and it brings me some happiness, you know? None of them would be what they are without Rosie. She shouldered the burden of managing the family so that he could do whatever he wanted to do, what he needed to do. My mom, I think, without her, I don't, I don't know if any of us would, would be here and be doing the things that we were able to do. It's difficult living with an artist, and she did it with, with a smile on her face and with grace and with unconditional love and with patience. I always noticed that they had such a tight family bond. And she said, you need to eat dinner together, sugar. And I would say, yes, ma'am. And she said, keep your children close and be sure that you let them know every day that you love them and you believe in them. And I think too, with her children, they all, I believe, were naturally artistic, but she brought out in them the confidence that they could do or be anything or anyone that they would like to be. I was never with him that he didn't brag on his wife and his kids. He, every time I was with him, he would talk about what a wonderful woman Rosalind was. And, and I heard it said sometime that uh, that the measure of success is when the people that know you the best are the people that have the highest opinion of you. Because there's a lot of people that can go out there and fool the world, you know, right. that they've got it all going on, but, but their marriage is crap and their kids don't want anything to do with them. Boyd was a success because everybody that knew him the best just thought the world of Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Rosalind, Bonnie, and David Boyd Jr. <laughs>